The C-SPAN networks bring you long-form public affairs programming from the nation's capital and are a public service of your television provider. C-SPAN, created by cable. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Let the record reflect that the witness answered in the affirmative. Uh, Mr. Comey, the, the floor is yours. You can take as long or as short as you'd like. If you have any written statement that you would like to submit afterwards, we're happy to do that as well. It will be made part of the record. The time is now yours. Director Comey, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Cummings, members of the committee. Uh, I am proud to be here today representing the people of the FBI who did this investigation as they do all their work in a competent, honest, and independent way. I believe this investigation was conducted consistent with the highest traditions of the FBI. Our folks did it in an apolitical and professional way, including our recommendation as to the appropriate resolution of this case. As I said in my statement on Tuesday, I expected there would be significant public debate about this recommendation, and I'm a big fan of transparency, so I welcome the conversation we're going to have here today. And I do think a whole lot of folks have questions about, so why did we reach the conclusion we did, and what was our thinking? And I hope very much to get an opportunity to address that and to explain it. And I hope at the end of the day, people can disagree, can agree, but they will at least understand that the decision was made and the recommendation was made the way you would want it to be, by people who didn't give a hoot about politics, but who cared about what are the facts, what is the law, and how have similar people, all people, been treated in the past. Maybe I could just say a few words at the beginning that would help frame how we think about this. There are two things that matter in a criminal investigation of a subject. What did the person do? And when they did that thing, what were they thinking? When you look at the 100 years plus of the Justice Department's investigation and prosecution of the mishandling of classified information, those two questions are, are obviously present. What did the person do? Did they mishandle classified information? And when they did it, did they know they were doing something that was unlawful? That has been the characteristic of every charged criminal case involving the mishandling of classified information. I'm happy to go through the cases in particular. In our system of law, there's a thing called mens rea. It's important to know what you did, but when you did it, this Latin phrase mens rea means, what were you thinking? And we don't want to put people in jail unless we prove that they knew they were doing something they shouldn't do. That is the characteristic of all the prosecutions involving mishandling of classified information. There is a statute that was passed in 1917 that on its face makes it a crime, a felony, for someone to engage in gross negligence. So that would appear to say, well, and maybe in that circumstance, you don't need to prove they knew they were doing something that was unlawful. Maybe it's enough to prove that they were just really, really careless, beyond a reasonable doubt. At the time Congress passed that statute in 1917, there was a lot of concern in the House and the Senate about whether that was going to violate the American tradition of requiring that before you're going to lock somebody up, you prove they knew they were doing something wrong. And so there was a lot of concern about it. The statute was passed. As best I can tell, the Department of Justice has used it once in the 99 years since, reflecting that same concern. I know from 30 years with the Department of Justice, they have grave concerns about whether it's appropriate to prosecute somebody for gross negligence, which is why they've done it once that I know of in a case involving espionage. And so when I look at the facts we gathered here, as I said, I see evidence of great carelessness, but I do not see evidence that is sufficient to establish that Secretary Clinton or those with whom she was corresponding both talked about classified information on email and knew when they did it, they were doing something that was against the law. Right? So given that assessment of the facts, my understanding of the law, my conclusion was and remains, no reasonable prosecutor would bring this case. No reasonable prosecutor would bring the second case in 100 years focused on gross negligence. And so I know that's been a source of some confusion for folks. That's just the way it is. I know the Department of Justice. I know no reasonable prosecutor would bring this case. I know a lot of my former friends are out there saying they would. I wonder where they were the last 40 years, because I'd like to see the cases they brought on gross negligence. Nobody would, nobody did. So my judgment was the appropriate resolution of this case was not with a criminal prosecution. As I said, folks can disagree about that, but I hope they know that view, not just my view, but of my team, was honestly held 
fairly investigated and communicated with unusual transparency because we know folks care about it. So I look forward to this conversation. I look forward to answering as many questions as I possibly can. I'll stay as long as you need me to stay because I believe transparency matters tremendously. And I thank you for the opportunity.